So calculating the moving average accomplishes this first step in our checklist for conducting a time series decomposition. It calculates that long-term trend in the data by averaging across windows of data to dampen down the seasonal or irregular fluctuations that are exist at these smaller time scales to really focus just on this long term movement in the data overall. And now our next step is to extract that long term trend so that we can focus on the other two levels of data, which are the seasonal signal and the irregular fluctuations. So how do we do that part? Just like you might look at the residuals from a fitted line or some kind of other model that you've conducted in, in R, we're going to do something very similar to that. I'm going to zoom in here on the CO2 data, get rid of that arrow so it's not distracting us. So one of the big approaches for pulling out that long-term trend from the rest from your data is to calculate a residual. So what we can do is for every single one of our observations, say this one here that I've uh, colored in blue, we simply calculate that difference between it and the value we got for that same month of data that came out of the moving average approach. And that difference then extracts the value we would expect coming out of that long-term movement of the data and gives us back the leftover amount that's not being explained by the long-term data that we can then use in our seasonal approaches. And that's effectively what is happening. All right, zoom back out and move over here. And that it's effectively what this inset is showing you in this graph is that difference between the value generated by the moving average and the observed point. And now we can very clearly see the seasonal signal that it isn't being influenced by the change in mean over time. That approach that we've just outlined is called the additive approach for removing that seasonal signal. And it's based on a model for how your long-term, your seasonal and your regular fluctuations combine to generate your observed data. And that model is this that your observed value is generated by the sum of your long-term trend, your seasonal signal, and then anything else that is bumping your time series around. They're not part of these more predictable long-term and seasonal signals. What that means is in order to extract our long-term trend and isolate it from the seasonal signal and irregular data, all we have to do is take our observed data and subtract out the value that we calculated from the long-term trend, just like we discussed with the CO2 data. And that will leave us with a combination of our seasonal signal plus our irregular data. Step two then is to disentangle the seasonal signal from, from that irregular signal and get those two isolated. There is another model for how the long-term, the seasonal and the irregular components are combining to generate our observed data. And that is called the multiplicative approach. Before I write the math out, it's gonna be worth showing you visually kind of what the big difference is between an additive and a multiplicative combination of these different time scales. So I'm gonna scroll up, we're gonna make a new time series here, time on our X, some value on the Y, whatever makes you happy thinking about it, rodents, coral, reefs, whatever. We use an additive approach for disentangling these time series when there's no interaction between the mean value over time and these other components. What does that mean? Well, imagine we have the CO2 signal increasing over time and we have this seasonal signal layered on top. I can't draw it very well, but you get the feeling. The additive approach is a good one here because that seasonal signal is not getting bigger or smaller as the mean changes. So that's what I mean by there's no interaction. In contrast, the multiplicative approach says, mm, these things interact. 
And so in contrast to the additive approach, you'd see something like this, where those fluctuations, those seasonal fluctuations are getting bigger over time as the value that you're measuring also increases. And so you have this kind of amplification in uh, the seasonal cycles with the increase over time. Mathematically, how that works is very similar to what we did for the, uh, the additive. But this time, instead of everything being added together, they're multiplied. So the long term is multiplied by the seasonal signal, which is multiplied by the irregular, which means that if you want to isolate your long term trend from your seasonal and irregular aspects of the data, you have to do some division instead. And so instead, what we would do is the observe divided by the long term, which then leaves this potentially interacting component between the seasonal and the irregular on the other side. And then from that, we would extract the seasonal signal to disentangle it from that irregular component. So let's go into R and see how we can do this, this part of the step.